any minute now, just round the corner, we're going to come to Walande Island and village, which was washed away a couple of years now. And so I'm just trading what is fine left of that beautiful, vibrant village. Walande is a village built on a coral reef. People have to live here because they have nowhere else to build their homes. The island is man-made and hundreds of years old. This looks like the end of the road. Carry Simon. Look at this. Look at all this. Wait, steady, Jack. Simon. Good behalf of Chief, Chairman, and members of Wallander Village Committee, church leaders, elders, and all the living Christian souls of this tiny artificial island. It is a great honor and privilege to have an opportunity to convey our warmest and cordial brief welcome speech to you all. He's just pointing out to me that the whole island is gone Two remaining houses are there. All that we knew before 2002 is all gone. How sad, how sad it is to know a thriving village lost to the waves. Yeah. It's not safe here. Not because, safe anymore. Yeah, not safe anymore. So we decided to move inland. The church was there. Yeah. Yes, it's underwater now. Wow, James. Oh, this whole place, together. is it all this left? Yeah. Look, the tide is coming in now, and it's almost gulfing up this whole place. Look over there, that's the stumps left of the village. Yeah. It was all over there. Now it's all underwater. It's tragic what has happened to a beautiful island, a village like this, Wallander. I was in my house, and I heard uh, screaming around the village, and I saw that the very huge waves were breaking against the wall stone, and uh, suddenly the wall stone break down, and the waves keep on to come in, come in. Uh, each day, another lot of waves come again, and keep on breaking for the whole week. And I was feel so frightened because that's my first time since I was growing up in this village. I haven't seen uh, something like that. Children running everywhere. And as I can see from my house, I saw the utensils yeah, floating. And I said, I think must be this is a very serious thing happened to my village. Willandi is a very uh, interesting case. The first thing is they experienced a very extreme storm event. Irrespectively of climate change, at some point you are likely to experience an extreme event. Tropical storms draw their energy from the sea. And the warmer the sea is, uh, the more likely these cyclones are to form. And in certain parts of the world we see evidence that yes, the number of cyclones has increased. But in other parts of the world, we see something different. So if you take northern Australia, for example, and those, some of those cyclones would, would affect the South Pacific as well, we're actually seeing a reduction in the number of cyclones, but we're seeing that there's fewer cyclones, but actually they're much more intense. Everybody on that island is new to, to us. It was very inhuman and very cruel to us, so we have to rush with our properties and paddle back to the mainland, mm -hmm. yes. just to uh, stay on, under those trees or any shelter we can find. The weather is abnormal. Uh, it's not really following the pattern as we experienced before. So I saw to say that uh, the problem is uh, uh, solely caused by this uh, climate change. How do you feel about this climate change? Uh, of course, I am feel uh, scared about it. And uh, even our children too are feel scared. Uh, because uh, it's beyond our reach uh, what we are going to do about it. It's gone, it's out of our, uh, the way we can control it. Sea level rise 
over the next 100 years will be somewhere between 30 centimetres at the very minimum, that's twice what we've experienced, up to a metre. Um, but rises of up to 2.5 metres could be possible, although at this present un unlikely. With mean sea level, we're talking about the average level of the sea, and we expect that to go up by a metre. Now, superimposed on that average level of sea is your wave height or your storm surge site. So when they talk about two metres, they're probably talking about a storm surge of two metres. But with present day sea level, a storm surge of two metres, if sea level rises by a metre, then we only need a storm surge of one metre to cause the same effect. So now they might be only experiencing flooding every 10 years, over the next decade, the next century, they might be experiencing flooding every year to even sometimes maybe multiple times a year, just as the baseline sea level rises. It's, it's a new thing happening these days. These uh, disasters uh, never happened before because we are Christian uh, villages, village. Uh, everybody seems to uh, put it this way that uh, the creation that God made uh, was well, spoiled these days. By, by human beings. So now it's time that uh, uh, God has take, uh, took his course. Yeah? That's why <laughs> these disasters are, 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 are striking us now. The disasters are happening, you think, that uh, because people have been careless. Yes, exactly. Not caring for the creation. The creation. Not caring for the world. People. Right. Yeah, so okay, on. I understand that. Yes. yes. Sea level rise has warmed the surface of the ocean. And it takes quite a lot of time for that heat to move down into the deeper ocean. So even if we completely removed all of our carbon emissions now, sea level rise is still going to continue for many hundreds of years. I think the future is, is bleak. We were born on that island, yes. bred on that island, and yeah. uh, we hope we would die on that island. Uh, as you can see, uh, our place has become desolate now and uh, all scattered away, all stones are scattered and uh, very soon I'm uh, also thinking to evac evac uh, evacuate this place. Coastlines defend themselves very well. Coral reefs are almost a natural flood defence. As the big waves from the ocean come towards these islands, the, the reefs that surround these islands absorb that wave energy. And what's happening with climate change, global warming, is, is many of those corals are starting to get damaged, they're starting to die. And indirectly, that can then allow more wave energy to actually reach the coast, which can cause erosion and flooding. Another line of defence in, in many of these islands is mangroves. So mangroves, with their big roots going down into the sand, they actually stop the energy of the sea, the waves, looking after the reef and looking after mangroves. That in, in, in many senses will, will not reduce, but will, pre will prevent the situation from getting a lot worse. Although we are moving to the mainland, we still have the concern to move to the upper higher ground, upper land, you know, to avoiding the sea, because we see the sea is kind of crawling up the coastal areas, and we fear if we're going to do anything about that, we will cause a problem for our children in the future. I was encouraged to see that even without very lots of money like we have in the UK or America or Australia, uh, they're doing the right sort of things. They're raising their houses, they're trying to build defences in front of their houses. They have to adapt before anyone else. And we in the West are going to have to do what they do, but we've probably got another 50 to 100 years to, to cope with it. So from our point of view, we need to take these people very seriously, look at what's happening to them and know that we will be experiencing the same thing down the line.